So what's good, TMG fam? It's your boy Ellen. I'm back with another reaction. How y'all feel? Listen, man, one of the most iconic cases was the OJ trial, bro. Back then and still pretty much talked about today. So here is a video. Robert Shapiro reveals what OJ whispered after verdict. Let's check it out. When OJ Simpson was accused of murder back in 1994, I was in law school. And like the rest of America, I watched the trial gavel to gavel. I was I was young. I was so young, bro. I, I barely knew what was going on. All I just heard adults talking about was this Bronco, this Bronco, this Bronco. And seeing, running around trying to play, but seeing the little black and white TV my aunt had because I was she was taking care of me in New Jersey for the summer. And seeing the little black and white TV with the two knobs on it and her sitting down in her kitchen watching it. Sitting down watching it, she had to see what was going on every day. And I just remember seeing that Bronco with police behind it, not knowing what the heck was going on. That, that's what I remember from that trial. You know what I'm saying? That's what I remember. But as I grew older, it never stopped being talked about. The OJ case, the OJ case, he did it, he did it. He, everybody wanted to say he did it, he did it, he did it, he did it. You know what I'm saying? Like, even though the verdict came, they were, everybody was still like, he, like, <laughs> You, you'd be hard pressed to find 10 people in a row who says that he didn't do it. I promise you'd be hard pressed to find that. I was in law school. And like the rest of America, I watched the trial gavel to gavel. While the smash success of the FX miniseries, The People vs. O.J. Simpson, American Crime Story, has proven once again that everyone still likes to talk about the trial of the century. Facts. Well, almost everyone. For nearly 20 years, Robert Shapiro, O.J. Simpson's first defense attorney, has remained silent until now. Thank you very much for being here. Why do you think the story still brings out so much passion? I think because, number one, Simpson himself, great all-American hero, one of the greatest football players who ever lived, first time DNA was ever used in a trial uh, of any significance. Very interesting lawyers on both sides and a horrible devastating loss to to two families mm -hmm. it was like for lack of a better word the perfect storm the perfect storm from what i read and from everything i gathered from the case back then at the time him who he was his stature what he meant to see that come about people would have to really be like and then the case and then the attorneys the attorneys alone, man, they were like, they, uh, it was almost like they were presidential, lifted to the ranks of presidential candidates, the way they were going back and forth at each other at like that. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was insane from what I gathered. I just wish I knew enough as a kid to, to sit down with my aunt who rest in peace was like a mother to me and, and just soak in that, that time that it was going on both sides and a horrible devastating loss to to two families mm -hmm. mr simpson is a wanted murder suspect two counts of murder when oj simpson was first arrested for killing his wife nicole and her friend ron goldman pretty much everyone thought he would be convicted not attorney robert shapiro shapiro was so famous he's portrayed by john travolta in the fx series the people versus oj simpson Shapiro now I watched that if y'all haven't seen that that was a great one go watch that that was a good one Travolta in the FX series the people versus OJ Simpson Shapiro now says that a lot of what you think you know about the trial is wrong first Shapiro says he outmaneuvered Marsha Clark by making her believe he wasn't ready the judge asked Mr. Shapiro what's your position your honor we're ready for trial looks at Marsha Clark and says, call your first witness. And you could see the blood come out of her face. And from that day on, I knew there would be no conviction. These are not efficient murders. Dang! This is like a chess match. Like, that's a chess move. I don't even play chess, but I know that's a chess move from what I've seen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When you can study your opponent or know your opponent better than they know themselves he told you right then and there let's go 
And when I saw her face, you know who do that? Boxers. You know, like certain boxers, your Mike Tysons, who when they're doing their face to face before they touch gloves and go to their corner to come out and fight, you'll see them stare at each other. And one thing Tyson would say is, if I stared at you and you blinked, or if I stared at you and you look away, I knew I had you. I knew I had you. You lost the fight before we even got started. Like, mental games that these lawyers play is different. That's why they always say, man, if you got the money, if you have the capital, if you have the funds to hire a high-priced attorney, you might be able to beat that case. It's your, your odds are here now opposed to here with a regular attorney. It's because certain little tactics, like what he just gave you a glimpse into, that's insane, bro. I got to hear that again. Ready. The judge asked. Hold on. We got to hear that again. A lot of what you think you know about the trial is wrong. <laughs> First, Shapiro says he outmaneuvered Marsha Clark by making her believe he wasn't ready. The judge asked, Mr. Shapiro, what's your position? Your Honor, we're ready for trial. Looks at Marsha Clark and says, call your first witness. And you can see the blood come out of her face. And from that day on, I knew there would be no conviction. These are not efficient murders. These are murders that are really slaughters. Second, Shapiro believes the prosecution did not understand the evidence. Did the dream team win that case or did the prosecution lose it? I think it's a combination of both. Mm -hmm. The prosecution wedded themselves to one knife, one killer theory. I think it's pretty clear that it was within reasonable medical probability that more than one knife was used. There is a strong possibility that more than one person was involved. And you believe the killer of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman has never faced trial? I think there's a strong possibility that that's the case. If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. Fam. So not only did he take you and and play chess with you, then based upon your argument, he sat back and said, this is how I'm going to attack it now. You just gave me how my strategy of how I'm going to beat you. You think it's one, but the evidence and facts and everything else indicate that it's multiple. So now I can make you look like you have no idea and you're accusing somebody you're accusing somebody but you have no idea how many killers it was so now i could just make you look crazy in front of the jury case closed case closed like who goes in there you gotta be a great attorney right and feel however we, we remove oj out the, out the situation out the equation we remove oj right but you gotta, you're a confident enough attorney to say, I don't care what y'all think or how y'all view them. I'm gonna get this dude off. I'm gonna make sure, however you feel about it. You know what I mean? Because our opinions about whether or not he did it or not is not what we're, what's being talked about right now. We're talking about these two attorneys and how he just outwitted her. And, and his his all-star team, as they, they called it, how they came up with a better argument for the jury than the other side did. There's a strong possibility that that's the case. If it wow. doesn't fit, you must acquit. And finally, Shapiro had a plan for that bloody glove. I tried the glove on. It was a little bit wide in my palm and a little bit long in my fingers. O.J. Simpson has enormous hands, and I knew that that glove would not fit him. Really? Wouldn't even be close. Did you feel in that moment when you put your hand in the glove that you were trying on the glove of the person who murdered these two people? As you say it now, it is chilling. But I was looking for one thing and one thing only, the size of that glove. So when O.J. Simpson was asked to try on that glove in that courtroom, did you realize it was a critical mistake by the prosecution? Here's what I told O.J. Simpson. I want you to walk as close to the jury as you can 
hold up your hand like you're holding the Olympic torch and pull and tug on that glove because it will not fit. And clearly it didn't. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Orenthal James. He said, I want you to walk. It's, listen to the, to the, I don't want to say the games, even though you could feel like they are games that are being played in that courtroom. You you have you well within right to say that because I do believe that as well. But look at the tactic. I want you to walk close, close to that jury, and I want you to pull and tug in front of them. Why? Because you're you're tapping into their mental. You're tapping into it, and everything that in them that says it can't be. It it don't fit them. So all this other, am I? And, and what that does to them is it makes them second guess everything that they've come to hear in this case that has been said towards OJ. That's insane, man. That's insane. That's insane, bro. I would have never thought he would have walked out of that trial, bro. And I bet gamblers in Vegas would have never bet on OJ being found innocent. That's... In Simpson, not guilty of the crime of murder. Or not guilty as the technical term. Murder. Moments after the verdict, OJ Simpson leaned over and whispered something in your ear. What did he say? You had told me this would be the result from the beginning. You were right. How did you feel when you saw OJ laughing and posing for pictures shortly after the verdict? I thought it was inappropriate. Two people were dead, and there should still be some respect, certainly for your ex-wife. Now, when he was arrested for armed robbery and kidnapping years later, did he call you? Before he answered that, I want to tell y'all, I was in... I had went on a training, right? Me and uh, a friend of mine, we had went to this training. And after the training, class was over with. And uh, before we went back to all our hotels and stuff like that, we stopped at a bar. So we're sitting in a bar, we're playing pool, we're having drinks and a good time. And all of a sudden, it's, like, it's, it's kind of like a movie scene. This comes over the TV. OJ Simpson, arrested for i think it was stealing his own memorabilia i looked at my friend i said they got him now he's gonna pay for every everything that he's gonna be i know this says robbery is what he's convicted but he's gonna be on trial for murder again and they're they're gonna convict him this time this they don't care nothing about this this robbery of this 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 step of his memorabilia is really him going back on trial for that case, and he finna serve time for that, bro. That, that's exactly what I said to him. So he was like, you think so? Because he was like, you know he did it, right? I was like, I thought he did. You know what I mean? But he was like, but I don't think they're going to do that. So when, when, the very, when he was actually found guilty and received all those years, he called me up. He was like, yo, that's crazy. I was like, I told you. I told you. Arrested for armed robbery and kidnapping years later. Oh, yeah. Did it was the kidnapping, too. I forgot about that. They call you? No. Why not? Do you know? Up to him. I wouldn't have taken the case in any event. Why? He still owed me money from the first one. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, snap. Bro, he got a tab still left. He was like, nah. But that's not a, the only reason he wouldn't have took it, because... If it was a high profile enough case and they owed him money, he just still took it because a lot of these lawyers be they like the press just as much as the pay. You know what I mean? This this trial made made uh Johnny Cochran a household name. Household name. Nobody, I don't think nobody really knew who Johnny Cochran was like that. Maybe if some industry people or you know what I mean, some people well within that. But outside regular Joe Schmo, me and you. We probably wouldn't have known who Cochran was, but after that case, he was a celebrity, Johnny Cochran was. A celebrity, and it was crazy. So, yeah, he'd have took that case if it would have been big time enough. But 
after winning that one, why take another OJ case to to kind of you know what I mean? Mess up the the grandiose one you just won. You you you're not gonna do that. You're not gonna chance it. You're already up here. Chance and losing that one brings you back down here, and now everybody goes back and 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 you know what I mean? Goes through that whole case and all of that. And now you're 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 pulled back down, and everybody's looking at you a certain way. No, you remain up here by not taking that case. He was smart. After the verdict, Shapiro went on to create the popular website LegalZoom. Fast food like legal advice, quick and affordable. We put the law on your side. But in 2005, Shapiro's life went into a tailspin when his 24 year old son, Brent, died from a drug overdose. When you went to the hospital that morning, did they let you see him? Whoa. The most difficult thing that a parent will ever endure is seeing a child on life support with her eyes taped closed and standing next to his mother and knowing that you'll never see him again. The Shapiro family channeled their grief into the Brent Shapiro Foundation, which lobbied hard for a good Samaritan law that says anyone can report a drug overdose without fear of getting into trouble themselves. He wants this to be his legacy, but that's probably not what people will remember him for. What's the takeaway from the trial of the century? There's moral justice and there's legal justice. And when that not guilty verdict uh, was rendered, I felt legal justice was done. As far as moral justice, I haven't discussed it with anyone, including my wife. Mm. I wonder what, how y'all feel about that last statement. What does that tell y'all? How do y'all feel about that? Does that, does that say to y'all in the back of his mind, he know OJ did it, but he had a job to do and he was going to do his job. What do y'all think? Man. And, and to echo that point about him having to stand by his son, no parent ever wants to do that, bro. Have you ever stood by somebody on life support? I have, I have, it's one of the worst feelings, bro. I had to do that with my mom. You know what I'm saying? Just just stand there and see and know eventually this person who raised you, this person who gave you life, this person that meant everything to you, pretty soon you'll never see him again and they'll be gone. Hardest thing in life for me ever, bro. Tore me up. Still haven't recovered from that. So prayers to Robert Shapiro um, and uh, good luck to his uh, foundation, man. But Y'all get at me in the comment section, bro. Let me know what you thought of this. How, how, where were you when the trial went down? What do you remember? How did you feel about the verdict? Him getting the not guilty. Then him showing back up in the news with the kidnapping and his, his memorabilia. What did you guys, how did you guys feel? Did you guys think, oh, this is karma catching back up to him? What was your whole thought process? Like, take me through it in the comment section, all right? And y'all get at me and let me know what you think and stick around and stay tuned. Till the next one, I'm gone. Peace.